Hello, hello. I am Fernanda Paiva, Hitchhiking Stars, and this is our moment together to talk about the full moon. So we're talking in particular about the full moon partial eclipse that's going to be happening on the 17th or the 18th of September, depending where you are in the world. So it could be late hours of the 17th or early hours of the 18th. So full moon partial eclipse. Now that's going to be happening at 25 degrees Pisces. So 25 degree degrees Pisces. And we know that a full moon, so to begin with, just a couple of thoughts here. So we know that the full moon is connected with the harvest. It has a connection to um, uh, culminations. Something becoming really clear and really obvious, really big in the sky that we kind of become aware of. Um, this full moon eclipse could give us a lot of insights, could give us a lot of ideas as well. Um, because it's in a, a square to Jupiter and Gemini. So Jupiter and Gemini is kind of involved a little bit in this full moon. So Jupiter forming a square with this full moon could even be a little bit of an advice here. Because this full moon is so powerful in Pisces. Um, this could be a little bit of an advice on um, getting more ideas, focusing on communication on thoughts, not getting too attached um, to whatever it is that's happening, not taking it so personally. I don't know. I think about those qualities that we usually connect with Jupiter. But before we get into the chart, because I've got the chart right open, right in front of me, as usual. Before we look into the details of this chart, let's talk about the 25th degree of Pisces. So as usual... Let's just have a look at the 25th degree. What is the imagery for it? And also, before that as well, let's just talk a little bit about eclipses. So this is a partial eclipse because it's a little bit further from the nodes, from the lunar nodes. So we have a very exact, precise eclipses. As cl you know, as clo The closer they are to the lunar nodes, the more precise that is going to be. Now... The North Node is at 6 degrees Aries and the, the Moon is at 25 Pisces. So there's, there's a little bit of a distance between the two. And I think this is one of the reasons why this is a partial eclipse. Nevertheless, this is the eclipse season. And this is the beginning of the eclipse season. So let's talk a little bit about that. Or let's just have a couple of reminders when it comes to eclipse season. So... We do have eclipse seasons every year, twice a year. So they happen fairly often and they are part of the natural cycles of life. So there's no doom and gloom. There's no need to, you know, run around, pull your hair out. Um, but they are part of the seasons. They have their seasons, their natural rhythms. With all of that said, yes, they tend to be more intense. These full moon eclipses tend to be even more intense than a normal regular full moon would be. In my view, eclipses tend to bring an energy of urgency and of non-negotiable as well. If there's something that we've been dealing with for a while that we're not so sure, that we want to break up, that we want to move on, that we want to change, and that full moon eclipse happens somewhere relevant in our charts then that energy is going to push us further over the edge. We're going to potentially take action. Things are going to develop. Things are going to happen very strongly. So that's something that we need to keep in mind when it comes to eclipse season. The way I like to think, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've shared that with you in the past already, but the way I like to see and I like to think about eclipse season is that they work like portals. So there is a portal that you're going to be crossing during this um, eclipse season. And to be able to cross that portal, to cross that bridge, you're going to have to leave something behind. So there is a luggage, there's something extra that you're going to have to leave behind in order to be able to cross it. So whatever it is, whichever area that is in your life, in your chart, 
that's where you're going to have to leave something behind. And sometimes this may feel a lot more intense and more urgent because it will be so connected to your natal chart. So let's say you have a sun at 25 degrees Pisces or the moon at that degree or Venus. And so that really will activate something very, very personal for you and will feel very strong. But for all of us, to a greater or lesser degree, we have to leave something behind. So that's an energy that we need to keep in mind, that we need to respect as well, and potentially meet with reverence and um, and and honor this energy as good as as well as we can. So that's that. Now let's have a look at the Sabian symbol for 25 degrees uh, Pisces. So the imagery for this degree is. Um, big window of intense change. No, oh gosh, this is my own notes. No, um, the degree for this new moon is a new moon for this full moon. It's confusing. Ah, la, la, la. I'm gonna start again. So let's have a look at the Sabian uh, symbol. So 25 degrees Pisces. Um, the imagery is a new moon reveals that it's time for people to go ahead with their different projects so it's interesting and confusing as well because we're talking about a full moon that's happening there's a full moon eclipse happening on 17th 18th of september 25 degrees pisces but that degree in the sabian symbol is a degree or an imagery for a new moon so the new moon reveals that it's time for people to go ahead with their own different projects. So there's something about potential separations, potential individuality there that gets a stronger between us. And it might be challenging there, you know, some relationships that we have, some partnerships that we have that we have outgrown them. I think this imagery is very clear about that. And even though it says a new moon, I mean, obviously, the fact that this is a full moon eclipse, we have a very strong indicator for a new beginning, right? So with the eclipse, and here is the note that I was reading for you before, is we have a big window of intense charge, intense change. And, and we have the potential for rearranging our lives and our life situations as well. It could be a very, very big release of energy here. And the Sabian symbol is also a symbol for new beginnings. It's also a symbol for um, starting anew, moving on from something. There's a real strong feeling of moving on, looking into where we have merged a tad too much and we have lost touch with our own individual selves with our own sense of who we are and that's an interesting one isn't it because the full moon happens in pisces and pisces is the sign of merging right of transcendence transcending the illusion of separation there's a lot of that when we think about pisces channeling divine inspiration into the world so it could be very inspiring and help us channel these energy, but it could also bring that sense of um, of challenge on where we've been a bit too merging. It as it is an opposition, right? A full moon is always an opposition. So we always need to think about the axis. We've got Pisces and Virgo involved here, so relinquishing. Some of the shadow sides of Pisces could be one way of manifesting this form, getting in touch with that energy. Um, where have we merged too much? New beginnings connected to individuality, our own projects, a sense of a new era. I love the idea of a new era here because we're talking about... Um, we're talking about eclipse season. So really, it is something to do with a new era that's happening. Now, let's have a look at the aspects 
that this new moon, that this new moon or that this full moon uh, is making. So the full moon eclipse, partial eclipse. So the first one that obviously calls my attention very strongly is the proximity to Neptune. So the moon is at 25 degrees Pisces and Neptune is at 28 Pisces. And Neptune is moving backwards. So it's kind of, you know, they're sort of meeting. There's still going to be a conjunction between the moon and Neptune. So it could enhance those feelings, those Neptunian feelings, a sense of confusion, a sense of where we are, why are we where we are, and how did we get there, and, you know, but it could also enhance mystical experiences, mystical feelings as well. And I think this opposition here can be also challenging our sense of um, our sense of in our sense of rationality. Bring that sun in Virgo. The energy of Virgo is is the rational, analytical versus the mystical, and the very very mystical because it's a moon conjoined Neptune. So really, that energy there is very under the spotlight. And, and and not only through the moon and the sun here in opposition and Neptune being so close to the moon, but also Saturn and, and Mercury being in opposition. So this is another planetary configuration that we have during this full moon. And it really is kind of re, re in bringing this energy again showing us that the Virgo Pisces opposition is really under the spotlight here in this moment and that we need to think about how can we be of service and higher service at the same time? How can we um, manifest and be in touch with our, um, with our spiritual beliefs and still be grounded? I think there is an issue there. There is a connection there between dreams and turning these dreams into reality. How can we do that? How can we bring those aligned and um, together as well? So that's really something that uh, I keep thinking in connection to these um, placements there. So a kind of a repetition there. And, and a Mercury opposite to Saturn gives a sense of manifesting our thoughts as well and 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 working with magic in some way as well because we've got that saturn and pisces so the connection between the saturn and mercury could really be very powerful and with that comes also a warning of keeping aware of your thoughts around this time and for the weeks of the eclipse season as well because your thoughts could powerfully be manifesting reality even more so than in our regular um, days. So really, really pay attention because we can really bring something to fruition with this energy. Um the other aspect which obviously I've mentioned to you is Jupiter being in square to the moon and the sun as well. And as a, you know, forming a T-square here could be an apex, could be a way out of the opposition, of the sort of push and pull between Virgo and Pisces. And this could be um, the new projects. You know, think about that imagery of the Sabian symbol. Uh, people following their own project. So there's a sense of separation, a sense of emerging from a situation of being too merged, but also is a project, is a new project, it's a new idea, there's something to do with learning, expanding learning, expanding, you know, growing in that direction. So the Jupiter and Gemini could be reflective of that, a way out from, you know, a, a situation where there's a lot of enmeshment, could be focusing on projects, on learning, new ideas, communication, all of those Gemini flavors. So that's there. And there are a couple of other aspects that I really want to mention with this full moon. One is Mars and Cancer. We've got Mars at seven degrees, Cancer and square to the nodes. And for me, that could be bringing us towards action as well like even if there's a little bit of confusion and again perhaps a connection with the Sabian symbol and the the separation as well coming out of 
um, a partnership of some kind, emerging from a situation where we were just part of, you know, everyone else, everything else, fighting for our sense of individuality there somehow with that Mars in is square to the nodes as well, you know, really taking action, stepping up somehow. And we also have a Venus Chiron opposition. So that Venus Chiron could be showing us some of the wounds in relation to these potential separations or the values that we have or the way that we behave in relationships. Again, having a Libra Aries axis is pointing out a little bit to that sense of individuality um, versus the, the togetherness. So how, um, how where, where is the measure? How can we do that in a way that's creative, that promotes the well-being of, you know, all the people involved, including our own? So that's it for this um, full moon eclipse. So I hope this being helpful. I'm wishing you a wonderful, magical full moon eclipse and, and that this eclipse season brings you very empowering changes and that it will lead you to the most authentic version of yourself. Um, I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.